Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So I'll just say it. I don't know why everybody is so surprised. We've been saying on the channel now for weeks, if not months, that the price cuts in China are going to flood the rest of the world at some point, and here we are. So yes, Tesla has now cut prices across the board, not just in China and the United States, but in Europe and Canada as well. I just wanna highlight a few quick things. You can see these three models highlighted in green. Those are the only three right now Tesla models that will be eligible for the $7,500 credit. The Model Y Performance is not because it's only a five seat variant and the cap for that is still 55,000. So interestingly, Tesla chose to leave it at 56.9. And I will say these price cuts give me a little bit more hope and when it comes to the Cybertruck pricing, these were the prices announced at launch. Of course, a lot has changed since then. Beginning of 2023, I had these projected prices just a 30% increase since the time of launch, but I bumped those down 15% across the board just to give us a rough range of where that would put us. And of course, there's chatter that they're not even going to make the tri-motor, so keep that in mind. But the point is Tesla is clearly focused on driving up production volume, even if they do take a slight margin hit, which we're going to talk about shortly. Tesla is clearly laying the smack down to the competition. Personally, I love this move by Tesla. I think it's the right amount. I think it's perfect timing. And the truth is no other automaker can do this and still make money. And if you compare the current prices to where they were at the beginning of 2021, you can see the performance variants are all now actually cheaper or flat, but the entry models or the long range variants are actually still up from 2021. And just a quick look at the comparison now between the same models in the United States versus China. Last time we looked at this, these were all between 30 and 40%, meaning they were that much cheaper in China. Now those numbers are a little bit more normal and you can see the difference right here. So outside of the rear wheel drive Model 3, prices in China now are only between 6 and 15% lower than the United States versions. Just the other day in Tesla's inventory, there were some standard range 4680 Model Ys available, but checking a few different zip codes, there were none that I've actually seen, so most of those were scooped up pretty quick. And yes, already if you look at Tesla's inventory, it is now dipping down. This chart was shared by Drive Tesla Canada, just going over some of the price changes in Norway, Germany, France, Netherlands, and the UK. And before we talk about margins, don't ever forget the mission of Tesla because it's not just making as much money as possible, it's of course transitioning the world to sustainable energy. And as they said over in Europe, with regard to these price cuts, we've achieved a partial normalization of cost inflation, which gives us the confidence to pass this relief to our customers. If you go to the Tesla configurator, there's also now a lot more information on the Inflation Reduction Act and eligibility, so check it out if you want to. And note here, things may change during March 2023. Gary Black on Twitter was asking, does that mean prices could go back up if the IRS revises the Model Y price caps to 80K? My answer would be no. Remember, this is only in here because the Treasury is going to put out new guidance starting in March when it comes to the battery sourcing and component sourcing requirements, so at that point, things may change for some Tesla models. Specifically, people have been talking about the Model 3 rear wheel drive not qualifying for the full credit because of where the batteries are coming from. I would absolutely not take this to mean that prices may go back up in March. And do not sleep on the solar side when it comes to investment tax credits. We still have the 30% for the solar and power wall residential, and now we also have 30% for standalone power wall residential, potentially for the next 10 years or so. There are potentially additional state and local incentives that you should check on the site. And on the configurator, when you scroll down to continue to payment, you will see if your current design does or does not qualify for the tax credit currently. I just switched it over to the performance and as you can see, it currently does not qualify. It's also important to note that software, accessories, taxes and fees will not count toward the price cap, which means yes, you can add FSD for 15,000, even if it takes you over the price cap amount, it will not disqualify you from getting the credit. It's the physical things on the car, like the wheels, the paint, the colors, that can actually disqualify you if you add those upgrades and it puts you over the cap amount. So the billion dollar question for Tesla stock is what will this do to margins? 
First, I would just say anybody who says they know definitively actually doesn't really know what they're talking about. So anyone out there saying price drops means margins are gonna get hammered is not considering a bunch of factors. Here's my argument. Back in 2019, the Model Y long range was $47,000. At the same time, back in 2019, Tesla's auto gross margins hovered right around 20%. It's at this time that the Gigacast idea was still in its infancy and Tesla was incurring the brunt of the cost for ramping Shanghai. And in 2020, Tesla started incurring all of the costs for building out both Berlin and Austin. Further, across 2021, during those build out and ramps, Tesla's gross margins were actually hovering around 28%. At this time, Tesla still had things like radar, ultrasonic sensors, and all of the wiring and harnessing that goes with those things. And these price cuts are of course going to increase Tesla's demand to a large degree, especially when paired with the $7,500 tax credits. Argument, to get a comparable Mach-E at even 310 miles of range when the Model Y long range is 330, you have to start at 64,000 when the Model Y long range is down at 53,000. It's simple, as production grows, those fixed factory costs stay the same, meaning over time, those fixed costs become a lower percentage of your overall revenue. And yes, we have the tax credits on the consumer side, but don't forget about them on the producer side as well. The $35 per kilowatt hour for battery cells and the $10 per kilowatt hour for battery module assembly. On an 80 kilowatt hour Model Y battery, these incentives could work out to around $3,600 in extra profit for Tesla. So if these work out like we think they're going to, that's going to go a very long way in helping to offset these price decreases. And how about the fact that a lot more production from Giga Texas is going to lower the logistics costs for Tesla when it comes to United States deliveries? Elon has also said that more of the input costs or the commodity costs are actually falling than are rising, so overall that's going to be a net benefit for Tesla. But in fairness, even this aspect alone, nobody really knows what's actually going on because we don't know what the contracts look like and certain things like lithium, aluminum, and nickel are still actually elevated depending on where you look the last few years. So none of us can say for certainty what's going to happen to margins, but the best we can do is to look at all of these factors and try to weigh them appropriately. Or how about the fact that more Tesla sales means greater Tesla market share and more people owning Teslas means that more people are going to ultimately pay for subscription or software services like autopilot and full self-driving. These are both very near 100% margin accretion. So here's a summary of what we just covered. All of the green points would of course help Tesla's margins and are factors that not everybody is considering. And the white of course would be negative. It would just easier to see than red. Last night, Rob mentioned margin disappointment. I personally am not so sure. Again, I just think it's impossible to know with any certainty how this will play out exactly. But weighing all the factors, I think Think personally I have more optimism than most. But it's not just hopium, it's rooted in this data you see on the screen. And maybe most importantly, I think now Wall Street's expectations for Tesla's margins are going to be much lower, which simply lowers the bar for Tesla and sets us up for great things ahead. And just last week, what did I say on Twitter? Tesla can lower prices another 25% and still make money. No one else can do this. And we didn't even talk about product mix or anything like that, but the point is, personally, I will not be surprised if Tesla is able to maintain margins above 20% and possibly even over 23 or 24% despite these price cuts, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens on Tesla's Q1 earnings call when all of these changes start to take effect. Moving on, a couple of quick ones from Drive Tesla Canada. According to a new study, Tesla is now the cheapest luxury brand to maintain. These numbers are the 10-year maintenance costs as a percentage of the new car purchase price. Tesla the lowest by far at 7%. Same numbers, but looking at individual models, as you can see, the Model S and X lead the way, and the worst, no surprise, BMW and Mercedes up around 40%. And no, that data was not just for electric vehicles. Study was done by Clunker Junker. According to Vander Research on Tuesday, Tesla retail shareholders bought the largest net daily amount ever of $316 million worth of Tesla shares.
Tesla is again improving its security in a fun way as it's partnered with Pwn to Own again to offer a $600,000 cash prize and a Tesla if anybody can basically hack a Tesla and its systems. Full article will be linked below. Starlink dishes are continuing to see a rollout across the country at supercharger locations. This Polestar executive, Frederica Claren, has called out Toyota, saying no matter how you present the facts, there's no denying that loads of hybrid vehicles across the globe are still spewing harmful tailpipe emissions. And she said, if you, Toyota, keep focusing and having that in your business plan, you're not going to level up in the way you need to in terms of this new technology. I couldn't agree more. From a Chinese source, we get some hints about what we might be seeing with Tesla's new hardware for. This all coming from an internal document shared by Chris Zhang, so take it for what you will. The forward-facing camera module that was three cameras is being bumped down to two, most likely because the new cameras will have better pixel density and field of view. These documents show no new cameras. People have been talking about one on the front bumper, but we're not seeing that here. The forward-facing cameras now have a fan, and along with upgrading all of the cameras to have better density and field of view, the B pillar is also getting a new heating device. And of course, we've seen a lot of reports talking about Tesla potentially releasing that new high-resolution radar sometime soon, but nothing from that in these documents specifically. And lastly today for Toyota, I would just say now is the time to be doing a lot more than just considering. Hope you all have a wonderful and a safe weekend. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.